Hi viewers, welcome to Sports Dairy program. I am very happy to meet you all in another Sports Dairy program. Every week we are meeting with various international athletes who brought laurels to our country and Tamil Nadu. The players who are going from Tamil Nadu are participated in various international tournaments and this week also we are going to meet a player who brought laurels to India and Tamil Nadu and participated in various uh, international tournaments. He is from tennis, his name is Indian tennis star Somde Verman and he knows all the tennis players across the globe and is a very famous player in tennis. He participated in US Open, Wimbledon, Australian Open, Davis Cup in India and also like participated in major global event Olympics in 2012 and he has got like, Padma Sri Arjuna Award and for the next half an hour you will be totally enjoying cherishable moments. Let's meet Somde Verman and chat with him. Hi Somdev. Hi. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Uh, it's been pleasure meeting you in our program Sports Dairy. Okay. So tennis, 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 your career. So like right now you have retired from professional tennis and uh, we want to extract so many information about your career. Okay. First uh, tell us about uh, the, your uh, childhood career. Like I want to know how you got uh, interest and passion towards uh, tennis. Yeah, so the funny thing is I actually uh, grew up in Chennai. Uh, I, I grew up in Calcutta, but you know, my parents, um, my dad worked for the government and so we, we moved here in 1993. And that's actually where my entire tennis journey began. So the funny thing is, is that in Calcutta, uh, when we grew up there, uh, I was told that I was too small to play tennis. Okay. Uh, and the coaches actually didn't allow me to hold a racket because they thought I might get hurt. And that made me want to play more and more. So when we came here to Chennai, we grew up at the income tax quarters in Nungambakam and um, they had two courts there. Okay. So, you know, we got hold of a couple of rackets, there was a massive wall. Okay. And that's where the whole journey began. Like, why tennis uh, apart from other sports? Uh, what is the one thing inspired you to choose uh, tennis from the childhood itself? Um, yeah, it's a good question, you know, to be honest, because I played pretty much every sport growing up. Uh, I think one of the aspects that I really liked about tennis is the fact that it was an individual sport and I could control my own destiny to an extent, you know, I, fe I felt like if I played badly and lost, okay. I could just blame myself and look for ways to improve and, uh, you know, I felt, uh, I felt, you know, certain things like, for example, selection processes, uh, all, all of those things in an individual sport, it's always easier because you have the opportunity to prove yourself. Can you please tell us about your family? Yeah, so, you know, like I said earlier, my dad worked for the government. Uh, you know, and uh, I have two older siblings, an older brother and an older sister. I'm the third and, you know, my mother was a homemaker. She, she kind of really raised us all in, in a sense. And uh, yeah, you know, so the funny thing is my dad loved playing sport and uh, he never played at a, a professional level. He played at a high level in a college in States. But, uh, you know, I think it was in a way his dream to have somebody in the family play. So my brother started out playing tennis. Uh, back in Calcutta where I wasn't allowed to play. So in a sense, my brother was always my idol growing up till I was about 12. Okay. Because my goal in life was just to beat my brother. It wasn't to do anything else. And uh, you know, and then once, uh, you know, I started playing a lot more, started playing a lot more tournaments. And it was much later that I realized that I kind of fell in love with the game. Okay, you said uh, you have moved from Kolkata to Chennai. How long you stood in Kolkata and from uh, which period you are here in Chennai? So, I, uh, you know, I was born in Guwahati, but very soon after I was born, we moved to Kolkata and uh, lived there for about eight years and moved here in 93. I was just a little more than eight and I stayed on here till I finished my, my entire schooling here, you know, so 10th, 11th, 12th, everything was in Chennai. Okay, where did you uh, complete your schooling? So, I started off at Asan Memorial, um, that's in Greens Road. That was like Yep, yep. Uh, so, I spent from second to eighth over there. Then when I, in, by the time I was in the ninth standard, I joined the Britannia Amritraj tennis, uh, you know, uh, scheme where a lot of great Indian players have kind of been. So, you know, one of the things with that program was we had to be at uh, MCC because they had a very good, uh, you know, understanding with the school because they knew that, you know, we were all playing junior tennis, we were all representing the country, we were all traveling a lot. So the school was very, 
uh, you know, accommodating to all the juniors. So ninth and tenth was there. By the time I reached eleventh, I realized that I was playing too many tournaments. <laughs> I couldn't go to school. So then I did the open schooling. Um, that was at Saraswati Kendra in Alwar Pet. Finished my eleventh and twelfth there, and that's when I left in 2004. I left to the to the states. Okay, you have said uh, Britannia Amritraj Academy. Uh, you have uh, learned your uh, tennis uh, coaching everything in uh, MCC School, Madras Christian College. So how that academy was very instrumental uh, in your career to shape everything and to become as a professional player. Yeah, I think that academy was very important. You know, if you if you look at the history of that academy. I think from that academy alone, there was Leander Pace, Gaurav Natekar, Karan Rastogi, Asif Bismail, myself, and you know many other great players from that academy who were all national champions at different age groups, but also represented India in Davis Cup. So I think that that uh, that academy had a really strong history of, of producing great tennis players, and I was very lucky to kind of become a part of that at, at the age of 15. Okay, you mentioned the support uh, from Amit Raj Brothers, and also you have mentioned Leander Pace. And your uh, fellow colleagues like uh, Leander Pace, uh, that during your period that when you started uh, after 2000, 2005, they were uh, uh, getting up in their standards in the yeah. tournaments. Leander Pace, Mahesh Bhupati, Rohan Bopanna, yeah. and Sanya Mesa. So tell us about your colleagues also. Yeah, I mean, you know, those guys had a much earlier start than I did because I chose to go to college in the States. I, I finished college tennis from 2004 to 2008. And obviously, Leander and Mahesh were very established, you know, in the you know, mid-90s almost when they, when they took off, they became the number one country, number one team in the world, uh, doubles team, you know, they won Wimbledon that year, they won the French that year, and final US Open and Australian Open, so that was in 99. So they were, they were obviously great players and I, I was a kid at the time, so it was in a sense, I was always aspiring to kind of play Davis Cup with these guys as my teammates, which, uh, you know, later on it turned out to be true, but Rohan as well, you know, I, I, I was a little bit more in touch with Rohan because we were kind of, he was a little senior to me, but we were playing the same events. And uh, so Rohan and I shared a, a, a close friendship even now. And Sanya and me were, you know, we kind of grew up together. She's one year younger than me. We played the junior circuit together. Uh, we traveled to Asia together. We traveled to Europe together. And, you know, her family, I know her dad, her mom very well. Okay. And, you know, she's a lovely person. Uh, now she's obviously a mother and she's attempting a comeback. So. You know, good luck, Sanya. Uh, we'll all, always be rooting for you. And you know, it's just great to see, personally, I think Sanya was one of the biggest tennis icons. And you know, to kind of have grown up with her and seen, you know, the difficulty she's had to go through and how well she's handled it. I think it's, uh, it's really cool. And uh, you know, she's probably one of the most iconic sports people in our country. So during your college days uh, in US, and you made a terrific record that in uh, University of Virginia tournament and you are the one of the player like in that uh, 124 year period like the 13th player to do so and also in 15 year 50 years period fourth player to do so uh, going to three consecutive finals and winning two finals in that tournament how was that moment for you how was that experience you know it wasn't something that was well planned or anything you know i think uh when I went to college in America, I, I got very fortunate to go to the University of Virginia okay. where there was a great coaching system and there were the teammates who all had similar goals to what I did. So that, that was the most important thing. And after that, you know, we just kind of focused on getting better and better. Making, winning NCAAs or making three finals was not even in my mind, at least the first time. You know, I was just very focused on improving and I, for the first time in my life, I really felt like I was taking quick strides into improvement. Every three months, I felt like I was a much better player. And uh, by the time I reached NCAAs, I felt really good about my game. Uh, I remember this was 2006 in Stanford. And, um, you know, made the finals, played some great tennis, made the finals and unfortunately lost. That was the first one, but I felt like, you know, after I lost that one, a couple things happened. One was I actually realized that I could play at that level. You know, and it was very important for me to have that because just before me, the champions were, you know, Benedict Dodge and Benjamin Becker, um, you know, Matthias Boker was a few years. All of these guys played at the highest level. You know, they were all top 100 in the ATP, which is kind of every tennis player's dream. And so when I got to that final, I realized that like for the first time, like, wow, maybe, maybe I could play at that same level, you know. And then I think that that kind of led to motivation and, you know, one thing led to another. 2007 was really an epic tournament. Um, so, I, you know, I was telling someone, you know, in the semi-finals I beat Kevin Anderson, in the finals I beat John Isner. 
And last year at Wimbledon, both of those guys were in the you know in the semis, playing each other. Obviously, had that epic match, and Anderson has made the finals of the U.S. Open as well as Wimbledon. So. College tennis in 2007 was still at a very very high level. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me about? Can you tell me about uh, your contemporaries, favorite players, role model in tennis? I mean, I, I say this all the time, but honestly, we are blessed to be in a period with such great tennis players as well as such great role models. I think Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, Andy Murray, all of these guys, what they've done for tennis is absolutely incredible. Like, not only have they gone out and won all of these tournaments, they've won it consistently, they've won it on all surfaces, and most importantly, they're really model citizens in many ways. So, you know, they've given back to the sport so much. And uh, my personal favorite is Roger Federer. Uh, you know, maybe I saw him earlier before everybody else. Also, the way he plays the game is, is very different, uh, yet very elegant. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, I feel like he really can't put a step wrong, you know. So, he's, he comes off as a very honest guy. He comes off as very natural. And uh, I think that's why Roger is my favourite. Okay. After moving from Calcutta to Chennai, you were here in Chennai for quite some time. Uh, playing in front of Chennai home crowd, especially uh, during Chennai Open, you reached the final in 2009. So, how was that moment and experience? Uh, honestly, the, what happened in 2009 at Chennai Open is something that I, it's, it's hard for me to ever explain. So, the history to that is, is that, you know, in 96-97, when the Chennai Open moved to Chennai from Delhi, I remember sitting right there on those East stands and me and my family would get tickets and I would watch every single match. And my dream would be one day I want to be playing here. So that happened, I was a 12 year old, a 13 year old. I remember it was, you know, Mikhail Tilstrom who won it first, Patrick Rafter came back and won it. Um, you know, Boris Becker came to Chennai, Carlos Moya won it a few times, Guillermo Canias won it a few times. So all of these players, I kind of watched them. And my dream, Paradon Sri Chapan as well. There's so many exciting players who are coming to Chennai and playing on this very court. And so it was my dream. I said, you know, hey, I want to play the Chennai Open. I want to play on centre court. You know, and so 2009 was the first time that ever happened. And I remember I was just come out of college, broken into the scene. I was right around 200 in the rankings, got a wild card into the main draw. And uh, yeah, somehow dream things started happening. I remember talking about Carlos Moya earlier. And I played Moya in the second round on the centre court in the middle of the day because it was raining the night before, it was so hot. And uh, I think that was probably the biggest win I had ever had in my career at that time. Okay, after 2009, how good a year is 2010 for you? You know, it's, your time on tour is very difficult and very different in different years. So, for example, in 2009, I was a rookie. So, I had no pressure. I went out and I just played. 2010, suddenly there were expectations. So I remember actually coming back to Chennai, maybe losing second round over here, uh, not playing great. But then kind of the year was going on and on and then, then things started to break in. 2010 was the first time I broke the top 100 in the rankings. And then I started doing a lot better. And at the end of the year, you know, we played Davis Cup actually on this court in Chennai as well against Brazil. A very memorable come from behind. We were down 2-0 after Friday. Rohan and I lost two matches in five sets. And then, you know, we won the tie. First time India had ever done that. Okay. So that was big, 2010 and very shortly after that, won the Commonwealth Games in Delhi. Very special for me once again because I'd never won a gold medal for India before that. And 2010 Asian Games was probably even more special because you know, Sanam Singh is one of my closest friends. He went to the University of Virginia just like I did and um, you know we were teammates there and to kind of win a gold medal together for India was one of the most special things. And then to kind of back it up the next day by winning a gold medal in singles, something I couldn't have scripted myself and in many ways it was a dream come true. Uh, after having a marvellous year in 2009 and 2010, Government of India awarded you with Arjuna Award. So, how was that uh, recognition from Government of India? You have played tennis, represented India. So, tell us about that moment. Yeah, special moment for sure. You know, I think, uh, you know, it's one of those, you know, I've always believed in that awards 
especially are one of those things that uh, you know you 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 just go you you're just grateful for because you know what you what you really work for is is the stuff you do on the court you know you work hard to kind of come on this court and and perform and win and you know do all of these things with the awards and all of the accolades and all of that stuff always comes off the field so you know in, in a sense it's just kind of a reward for all the hard work that you've already put in so the fact that you know the indian government recognized the fact that i was doing well uh at broken the top 100 hadn't happened in you know tennis indian tennis for a really long time and uh you know it was a, i think it was it was something really nice to know that you know they they just appreciated the work that the athletes were doing so after 2011 2012 olympics was you were uh, made in olympics in 2012 so how was that moment and the experiences well honestly it, you know in many ways it was one of my dreams because i was a massive sports fan as a kid one of my dreams was always to kind of walk that uh, you know the opening day at the olympics and kind of wave to the camera as a as an athlete something i really look forward to so in that sense it was very special but you know honestly 2012 was a very difficult year for me because i uh, after a successful 2011 i had uh, injured my shoulder so 2012 early in 2012 i kind of had shoulder surgery a very major one and uh, you know i somehow made it back in time for the olympics but that entire year 2012 was you know very instrumental because it wasn't so great in 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 terms of tennis but it really really helped me kind of you know accept many things change mature as a as as a player as a person and you know it, it was a very important year for my life okay so yeah. can you share uh, the toughest uh, encounters favorable uh, favorite uh, tournaments um i think the favorite tournaments for me have to be the slams obviously uh, being an indian you know you grow up watching wimbledon that's something you do if you love tennis and i remember doing that so for me i remember playing wimbledon it wasn't my best surface but i remember having a great experience a great time um but for me the us open was always electric because you played night matches and you know a lot of my friends from america kind of came to watch me so you know i i think those two are my favorite events for me in terms of players i've i've been fortunate enough to play against roger federer i've played nadal i've played djokovic and i've played murray um so you know so you played against top players so yeah i played against the top guys yeah so what what you learn from those uh, masters Yeah, I think a lot of things. I mean, they make the game look a lot easier than it is. That's number one, obviously. But uh, you know, uh, apart from just playing against them in matches, you know, I played Roger twice, lost both times. Um, but you know, what what I thought was almost as valuable was I actually practiced with him a couple times. And you know, in those practice sessions, you learn that you know, a guy like Roger already so successful, but he's still so motivated to. get better he's still working so hard he's still so disciplined he's inquisitive he's trying to learn new things asking questions and you know these are the kind of things that i looked at like from roger federer and 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 learned that you know if if the greatest of all time is always so motivated to get better then we should all be able to be able to do the same so can you tell us about the current indian team setup and also like how this atp rankings is that affecting the indian tennis circuit and also recently also we saw like indian players uh, are very much prepared to play uh, davis cup with pakistan counterparts so like what is your, what are your views on that yeah i mean you know indian tennis has been doing better in a sense because now you see prajnesh who's in the top 100 unbelievable effort by praj you know he's a very he's a chennai guy he's a good friend of mine and it's just good to see that he's gone through a lot in his career in terms of injuries um and ups and downs and you know the fact that he's kind of stuck through it and you know fought and made it to the top 100 i think that's a fantastic effort you know apart from praj now there's ramkumar ramnathan from chennai as well he's been around for a few years but uh, you know he's been promising close to top 100 but hasn't cracked it yet but you know if he works hard in the future it, it could happen for sure uh, the next guy is sumit nagal you know i think he's been doing incredibly well as well in fact he just qualified at the us open and won a set of roger federer so you know if nothing else he'll definitely you know be known for that in uh, all around india so young you know young players are coming up players are getting a lot better um you know but uh, yeah and 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 i think having a few more atp events in india will always help kind of getting more players into the system giving more players opportunities to kind of get exposure playing against the best players in the world is always something special so i think you know having more events in india is is a key in your entire career uh, can you uh, tell us about 
the cherishable moments and the niceties yet disclosed in the sport um cherishable moments i mean there's there's really many i think uh, you know obviously on one hand of it you one end of it you look at and say obviously tournaments that you won so for me that would be you know either winning some great davis cup matches maybe uh, you know winning a couple of gold medals for india those are very special but i think apart from that also you know one of the things that was very important for me is in 2009 i got to kind of become a good friend with andy rodick and uh, i trained with him i stayed in his house and you know he taught me a lot so i think those memories from you know those days is something that i'll really cherish for the rest of my life after you come back in 2014 15 after your injury uh, you retired from your uh, professional tennis in 2016 any specific reason that you retired too early like we see players are playing till 40 45 for that example is leander pace yeah yeah i mean you know he plays doubles and i was never really interested in playing doubles so i guess you know one of the reasons that i did want to retire for me was uh, Uh, you know i you know the kind of player that i was i i realized that i needed to have a very high level of motivation in order in order to be to have a chance at being successful and i realized that and you know by the time i was 30 31 is that had that had kind of fallen off and i was interested in many different things so for example i ran a charity and you know i just kind of wanted to take a little break in life at at that time so i figured you know coming back and maybe focusing on that and seeing what else happened from there would be an interesting thing to do so it worked out well in that sense because i stopped in 2016 and now it's 2019 a lot of things have happened since then okay and 2017 18 18 is a very good year for you from again a recognition from uh, government of india so you were awarded with the padma shri so what was that feeling after getting arjuna in 2011 and padma shri in 2018 yeah for me in 2018 was one of the most welcome surprises i've ever had in my life you know i i honestly i never thought it would come because i retired in 2016 and you know thought never crossed my mind but uh, it was just once again nice it was humbling this time it was even more special in a sense because when i went to actually receive the award you know you are around everybody else who's received the padma shri and the in the various padma awards and then you realize that you know all of those people have had very strong impacts on different areas of india you know whether it's medicine whether it's education or health or you know so many different ways these these people have really affected uh, and helped india grow in the right direction so you know for me it was very humbling to be a part of the same company okay. and and to know that you know i also potentially had the ability to, to do that and luckily for me now i'm young enough so it's something i'm aspiring to do okay so tell us about your uh, married life and your part Yeah so you know I'm married to uh, I guess my wife now Shivali Wall uh, Shivali Devarman soon and uh, and yeah and so you know we've been uh, you know we got married in February this year in Udaipur uh, a small function with both our families and you know she's from Bombay she's studied law and uh, you know I've played you know she knows what I do so you know on the bright side I think you know we were we were kind of dating for quite some time before that so we knew each other quite well she had kind of been around me when i played she knew the kind of person i was and honestly sometimes in in you know they say you get lucky in lucky in life and i think that's exactly what happened in a sense you know i'm very happy i'm sure she is too and you know very very lucky to be together so what's your future plan you know i'd like to be kind of involved in in the sports scene obviously in india uh, with tennis maybe more specifically but with everything else uh, you know i i believe that sport is a very powerful medium in order to change a culture to grow a community uh, i've first hand seen how sport in one village can change the entire village you know uh, there's an example right here in front of eyes in kovalam in in chennai where just one sport of surfing has changed the entire outlook of a village uh, changed the economical structure of the village so i think there's there's many positive things that sports can do and i'm i'm a strong believer of that i have a Uh, my own charity called life is a ball where we provide sports programs to underprivileged kids all across india and uh, you know we see the positive impacts that that has on kids it has on communities so i think that's a that's probably the direction that i'm moving in i'm still okay. uh, young i'm an entrepreneur i have a couple small sport kind of businesses and okay. uh, you know with tennis and uh, with the charity with there's so many things with media as well uh, you know who's to say what the future is going to be but i think i'll be in sport in this stadium we are standing lot of stands are there 
here when you are playing lot of supporters would have supported you and specifically i want to ask you who are the supporters apart from them supported you especially the coaches and other uh, kind of uh, well wishers mentors and uh, obviously the friends if you want to thank anyone you can mention yeah uh, i mean you know career is, is although tennis they say is an individual sport i think uh, when you look at the number of things that were involved in me being getting any kind of success the number of people that were instrumental in that i think you know it, it was a complete team effort beginning with my parents the sacrifices that they made uh, you know the amount of times my mother traveled with me keep in mind i was uh, we i had two older siblings and older brother and a sister so the entire sacrifice that they had to make not just when i was young but even when i was older and you know the coaches the kind of time and effort everybody put in um my my agents my managers you know everybody support staff strength coaches teammates at at college you know i think because of all of this my journey meant something you know and uh, and i think i'll always be grateful to those people and finally the viewers who are watching this program what do you want to say so you can have your words yeah honestly my message to the young crowd uh, especially the crowd that is intrigued into playing sport but is not quite sure is just play because sport is the best metaphor for life you know in sport you'll go through wins and losses in sports you'll have to work hard uh you know you, you'll have to have discipline you'll have to have so many different aspects in order to perform you'll get anxiety before performing but that anxiety will teach you something about yourself so as long as you play a sport you will have an opportunity to do, to always grow as a human being and that's always the most important and a and a good advantage is also you will be able to take care of your health well and that's always a long term benefit of playing sport so my message to all the youngsters is just go out there enjoy yourself and play sport and hopefully everything else works out it's been pleasure talking to you uh, thanks for your time and it's been a nice time for me to interact with you and, uh, having all the information about your career we wish you all the best uh, for your future thank you thank you dinesh thanks yeah. a lot thanks hope you enjoyed this episode with the international tennis player somdev verman i will see you in another sports dairy program with another international sports player who have brought laurels to our country especially for tamil nadu till then it's me dinesh signing off from sports dairy program thank you very much